is a matter of great pride for LSIC that we are signing an MOU with Power to SME. And with this MOU, it will be a great experience to reach out in a big way to the end user, the MSMEs across the country. And uh, I am grateful to our chairman, Mr. Ravindranath and Mr. Narayan for spending the valuable time to be a part of this ceremony. I request Mr. Aki Sharma to kindly welcome Mr. Narayan. Mr. Sharma, to welcome our chairman, Mr. Thank you. Before we here, Mr. Narayan, like to say something. Oh, sure. Uh, it's a great honor for us to be here and think this uh, uh, MOU with NSIC. We've been actually working on this for seven, eight months now and we wind out all the details. We hope to make a large impact on the MSME manufacturing segment through this. Uh, basically, uh, NSIC and Power to SME will cooperate to go out there and service more and more MSMEs in and across the country. Uh, we will focus on the raw material requirement uh, as we've done over the past few years. Uh, we will also strive along, to NS along with NSIC to make SMEs as bankable as possible. Today, uh, the SME sector is highly financially underserved. Uh, I mean, to throw you a statistics, if you look at the worldwide GDP, 49% uh, of the world's GDP is actually comes from the uh, MSME and the SME sector across the world. But if you look at that number in India, 8% uh, of the GDP comes from the manufacturing segment, and 16% of the GDP comes from uh, manufacturing and services, everything put together. So there's huge headroom for growth here. And with this MOU with NSIC, we really hope to take that number to beyond the uh, 25%. Thank you, sir. Now we have our respected CMD with us. So we would like you to we like you say something. Well, dear Mr. Raman, the team from Power to SME. My mentor and uh, Mr. Prof. H.P. Kumar so it's truly an honor to again have you amongst us, my colleagues from NSIC. Mr. Narayanan very rightly said that uh, the contribution of the MSMEs in the economies world over is something which cannot be ignored. We also at NSIC believe that it is the synergies which matter. And that is what brings the two organizations, NSIC and Power to SME together. The agenda of both the companies is the same, serve the MSMEs. And I'm sure when these two organizations gel together, come together, we can reach out to far and wide MSMEs. And it would definitely be to the advantage of the MSMEs because that is what is the total mandate. And I'm very eager <coughs> that this MOU goes beyond the documents which will be signed today and we can really reach out to the MSMEs and do something for them. So less words, more action. Let's get going. Thank you. Thank you. So I also request our former chairman, Mr. Ajit Kumar, to say Mr. Nath, Mr. Narayan, Mr. Mitchell, Sudha, and Mukesh, our other friends. My ex colleagues uh, from NSIC, Kabaniji, and all dear friends from the media, Rajanji, Sethiji. In fact, uh, <coughs> NSIC and Power to SME both are very dear to me. NSIC, as you know, I have been associated for a long time. And I saw that a public sector, in the service of the MSMEs, how does it help, how does it transform? itself to provide value added services to the SMEs. Similarly, when I saw power to SME, working for the MSMEs, I was a bit surprised when I saw and went and saw the working of the company, I found that power to SME was equally doing a wonderful job. And uh, it's one of the best professionally run organizations. And that is how it attracted me. 
I would say the MSMEs is a very big sector in the country. And joining hands uh, by, uh, by you know, NSIC and Power to SME would bring a lot of synergy uh, amongst the two organizations and help in reaching out to a larger audience, larger number of uh, you know, MSMEs in the country. Both the organizations put together would be able to serve a huge clientele because the, the kind of uh, business and the kind of services that both the organizations offer are complementary. Uh, some of the services which Power to SME <coughs> provides, uh, particularly in the public-private partnership uh, arena, like uh, Finance Me and uh, you know, the SME shops. SME shops are really very um, useful for the SME sector and they would uh, uh, they would really uh, uh, lend a helping hand to the SME in the country. I am sure that both the organizations are going to leverage the strengths of each other and uh, of course NSIC being a you know is a heritage organization of the government of <coughs> India since 1956, 55, 55 and it has a great <coughs> name in the country with all India presence, with a huge network in India as well as in foreign countries. It has its own strengths. Each and every person in the organization is a true professional. I can see that I was talking to Mr. Nath this morning. And similarly, I find that uh, in Power to SME also, uh, it's a very professionally run organization. You know this MOU which Mr. Narayan and uh, Mr. Nath was talking about, that it has taken six, seven months. Because our people are so meticulous Sudha has taken four rounds of, you know, uh, checking, cross-checking and uh, verifying in the contents and all that thing. And that is the, the result that a very fine draft has emerged, which will really help the organizations. So I wish both the organizations all the very best. And uh, and I'm sure that the sector is going to be benefited. Thank you. Thank you. Now the first respected CMD and Mr. Narayan to kindly Sign the MOU the moment we are waiting for.
as prescriptive and Dr. Kumar also mentioned, to both of us are into some way the financial content of our operations. We do facilitate finance for the procurement of volunteers. We do facilitate finance for any other requirement of the MSMEs under our bank credit facilitation scheme. Rather, we have set up a different portal, which is called the Finance Facilitation Portal, wherein uh, we and that this service will render to the SMEs without any charge. We help them in preparing their requirement, their proposal, which is submitted to the bank. Then we follow it up with the bankers, get those uh, missing things completed. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we also <coughs> enable that they get the sanctions. We have the provision where it can go to more than one bank at a time. And if they get sanctioned from all the three, it is left to the MSMEs to select which would they like to choose. So the credit portion definitely is there. We ask them to raise with money, borrowings from the banks and give it to for the procurement of property. But coming to this component of delayed payment, that is something which we have been taking up with our ministry. Because the component in the interest of delayed payment and the finance facilitation councils which are there, MSME facilitation councils which are there, they should be operating in a far more professional manner. <coughs> Our uh, Ministry of MSME has created a portal where all these facilitation councils have been asked to put their pending cases on that portal so that there is an effective monitoring of them. What is required is a time-bound disposal of those cases instead of those cases lingering on for empty number of years. I'm sure uh, when our two organizations join to hands, we would be laying greater emphasis even on a quicker disposal of cases in the Mission Facilitation Council. Whenever we talk of MSME sector, invari invariably the focus is on the SMEs, whereas M factor feels <coughs> neglected and is neglected. S can become M, M can become large, but it's very difficult for the micro to become small. So is there any special strategies uh, that micro <coughs> units should be helped? Because they don't get finance, they have very uh, less reach and their resources are very less. So what is the focus? Sure. So, uh, see, it, for, for us to work properly with uh, companies, it's important that those companies come to a certain size. So, yes, our focus has been on the SME sector, not so much as the M. But if you look at the uh, market over the last 10 years, there are so many microfinance companies that have come in to, you know, facilitate that part of the center. The other, the for part of the uh, SME uh, universe that we are trying to address is just above the micro, where there are some support systems for the micro. If you go above the micro, right up, right up to the large and corporate, there is no banking facility and uh, working capital <coughs> facilities available. And that's because they are just not yet of the size, their books are not in order. Like Mr. Nath said, we are helping them get in order and get there. But don't you think that uh, uh, micro units are the pipelines to the small sector? Rajanji, well, I would like to add to what Mr. Ryan just said. NSIC's focus has largely been on the micro and small rather than the medium. Yeah. Because firstly, the medium came much later. Yeah. But ever since what we believe that the handholding is required by the micro and small, the medium can fathom for themselves. Yeah. And that is where I would say more than 90% of our operations are largely focused towards the micro enterprise whether it is raw material procurement, whether it is tender participation for them, whether it is even providing them skilled manpower, all these activities which we do, and the scheme of bank credit <coughs> presentation which I just mentioned, it is again those people who cannot afford a chartered accountant or things like that, that we help them in preparing their proposal, submitting it to the bank, without any cost being to be borne by them. So it is not that we would like to have money being earned out of every vertical of ours. This vertical is largely to help such people. And last year, the year just gone by 2016-17, we got sanctions worth about 536 crores for these enterprises. The proposals ranged from 10 lakhs to maybe 5 crores. So that is the component which we are trying to serve. And is doing an excellent job. 
people at large will stand to benefit out of it. Actually, the finance uh, me portal that uh, Power to SME has started, yeah. in fact, it, it attracts all kinds of <coughs> you know, applicants. It could mm -hmm. be SMEs, but micro are also welcome. The only thing is micros, uh, you know, the requirement is too small and probably they don't feel the need to go to NDFCs and other, uh, they, are, they are interested. So, see, the, at the behind, uh, at behind our partnership, you will have a lot of banks and NBFCs, etc. These, uh, the ticket size and interest these people is not twenty five thousand and one lakh. You know, they want to put in some honest work and give loans of ten lakh, fifteen lakh, twenty lakh, which is too large for the micro. So, which, which is where it's kind of. Uh, so just to add, sir, for example, even if you look at uh, you know places like Faridabad, uh, you know just to take an example, I have gone through a, a report which says around more than 30,000 unorganized SMEs, MSMEs, MSMEs, you know, are operating out of uh, Faridabad region. So if the number says something like 30, 31,000 something, it's it's really a huge number, and they are all falling in the unorganized sector. So, but that doesn't mean they are not actually working or they are not producing the quality work. What they are doing is, you know, whatever they are producing is not in the, you know, quality standard conditions that their working conditions are not standardized. But their products, they are trying to make it, you know, as uh, standardized as possible. Would there be anything like, uh, you know, from a platform like Power to SME, obviously, to offer something really uh, credible for? Uh, you know, people who are supplying for ONGCs or you know, uh, you know, working with those kind of ecosystem. Can we have something like for this kind of you know unorganized manufacturers who are uh, you know just trying to become uh, you know sustainable by producing better quality in a restricted you know cost um, We would love to do that, I mean, and we would uh, work hard towards doing that. But you know, as a corporate governance in an organization, both NSIC and part of SME, uh, we have certain preconditions, right? And these preconditions are that we will work with the formal economy sector, right? So in case we take supplies from somebody and we pass it on to somebody else, we will pass all the, till earlier, the excise and the taxes on to the other supplier. If the sector you're talking about, these 37,000 organizations are participating in the formal sector, we throw our doors open completely to them. Uh, if they are in the informal sector, as you say, and when you say informal sector, I would assume there will be lack of clarity in terms of title, ownership, etc. It becomes very difficult from the corporate governance point of view for uh, us to do anything in that space. Do you agree with that? Principle? Absolutely. <laughs> informal sector, nobody prevents them from coming into the formal sector. And the ease of doing business that the ministry is taking initiatives is really setting the doors open for them to come and come into the formal sector. And uh, that is where we also facilitated. Our uh, MSME data bank, which we set up, was another step, which uh, it, it was again an initiative of the Ministry of MSME and NSI, where we wanted them to come into the formal sector. The Udyogadhar memorandum, which is there, you know, all these things are initiatives of the government which say that you should come into the, uh, the formal sector. And both our organizations do not say that we will not tax them. Rather than, if you look at the formal sector in the country, the total sector in the country, there is a huge gap between the two. Why? Because there is a large component which remains into the informal sector. That is what needs to be covered. And that is what the challenge is being faced by our ministry. And they believe that we should have, if we say there are 5 crore MSME units, why should all those 5 crore not be formally registered? And when the registration process has been made so simple, and then we can, and it is not that the some of them are not enjoying uh, credit limits and all those things, but then for reasons best known to them, they they want to get confined to uh, 
the informal, the so-called informal sector. But I'm sure when our organizations start working together, the channelizing them into the formal sector would be one of the steps we'll be taking. As far as the raw material is concerned, and SIC has a some scale, and I think this power two SME, they are also doing the same. So how after this MOU, how you go to it, doing the same uh, parallel basis or something? There are so many banks in the country. We don't say that you have, you should have only one bank to serve the credit requirements. So if we have uh, two organizations even working on the same, uh, maybe the product. We offer the best services and that is where I said a little while back, we will be complementing each other <coughs> in terms of providing the services to the… Not, to the not, not competing each other. It is I knew the word competing was also there but I, I chose the word complementing because that is the intention. See, competition ends when you enter into an MOU. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I have not seen an MOU being signed in a competitive space. They yeah. choose to compete. Yeah. We choose to complement. <laughs> 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 that is the reason I am yes. Absolutely. We were, com maybe we were competing inadvertently if we were really doing that, but then we chose to complement each other Absolutely. and start working together. So that creates more value. Absolutely. Those companies come to a certain size. So, yes, our focus has been on the SME sector, not so much as the M. But if you look at the uh, market over the last 10 years, there are so many microfinance companies that have come in to you know, facilitate that part of the center. The other, the for part of the uh, SME uh, universe that we're trying to address is just above the micro, where there are some support system for the micro. If you go above the micro, right up, right up to the large and corporate, there is no banking facility and uh, working capital <coughs> facilities available. And that's because they are just not yet of the size, their books are not in order. Like Mr. Nath said, we are helping them get in order and get there. But don't you think that uh, uh, micro units are the pipelines to the small sector? Oh. Rajanji, well, I would like to add to what Mr. Narayan just said. NSIC's focus has largely been on the micro and small rather than the medium. Yeah. Because firstly, the medium came much later. Yeah. But ever since what we believe that the hand holding is required by the micro and small, the medium can fathom for themselves. And that is where I would say more than 90% of our operations are largely focused towards the micro enterprises. Whether it is raw material procurement, whether it is tender participation for them, whether it is even providing them skilled manpower, all these activities which we do, and the scheme of bank credit facilitation which I just mentioned, it is again those people who cannot afford a chartered accountant or things like that that we help them in preparing their proposal, submitting it to the bank without any cost being to be borne by them. So it is not that we would like to have money being earned out of every vertical of ours. This vertical is largely to help such people. And last year, the year just gone by 2016-17, we got sanctions worth about 536 crores for these enterprises. The proposals ranged from 10 lakhs to maybe 5 crores. So that is the component which we are trying to serve. And is not an is doing an excellent job. But I was more concerned with power to SMEs. So it's that is where the synergies SMEs. will come in. Na? So we, like, we will complement each other. Yeah, yeah. We two sides of the same coin. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Yeah. Like he said he got more than 536 crores of sanctions for yeah. SMEs. We in our own capacity got another 240 crores of sanctions for SMEs, etc. So that is where Dr. Kumar also said, and we also very strongly believe, it is the era of synergies. Yes. So if you have the right synergies, people at large will stand to benefit out of it. Actually, the finance uh, we portal that uh, Power to SME has started, sir. in fact, it, it attracts all kinds of <coughs> you know, applicants. It will mm -hmm. be SMEs, but micro are also welcome. The only thing is micros. Uh, you know the requirement is too small and probably they don't feel the need to go to MDFCs and other uh, they, are, they are interested in so see the, at the behind uh, <laughs> behind our partnership you will have a lot of banks and MDFCs etc these uh, the ticket size and interest these people is not 25,000 and 1 lakh you know they want to put in some honest word and give loans of 10 lakh 15 lakh 20 lakh which is too large for the micro 
So which, which is where it's kind of. For example, even if you look at uh, you know places like Faridabad, uh, you know just to take an example, I have gone through a, a report which says around more than thirty thousand unorganized SMEs, MSMEs, MSMEs, you know, are operating out of uh, Faridabad region. So if the number says something like thirty one thirty one thousand something. It's, it's really a huge number and they are all falling in the un unorganized sector. So, but that doesn't mean they are not actually working or they are not producing the quality work. What they are doing is, you know, whatever they are producing is not in the, you know, quality standard conditions that their working conditions are not standardized. But their products, they are trying to make it, you know, as uh, standardized as possible. Would there be anything like, uh, you know, from a platform like Power to SME, obviously, to offer something really uh, credible for, uh, you know, people who are supplying for ONGCs or, you know, uh, you know, working with those kind of ecosystem? Can we have something like for this kind of, you know, unorganized manufacturers who are, uh, you know, just trying to become, uh, you know, sustainable? by producing better quality in a restricted you know, cost plan? Um, we would love to do that. I mean, and we would uh, work hard towards doing that. But you know, as a corporate governance and an organization, both NSIC and Power to SME, uh, we have certain preconditions, right? And these preconditions are that we will work with the formal economy sector, right? So in case we take supplies from somebody and we pass it on to somebody else, we will pass all the Till earlier the excise and the taxes on to the other supplier. If the sector you're talking about, the 37,000 organizations are participating in the formal sector, we throw our doors open completely to them. Uh, if they are in the informal sector, as you say, and when you say air informal sector, I would assume there'll be lack of clarity in terms of title, ownership, etc. It becomes very difficult from the corporate governance point of view for uh, us to do anything in that space. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. <laughs> Informal sector, nobody prevents them from coming into the formal sector and the ease of doing business that the ministry is taking initiatives so is really setting the doors open for them to come and come into the formal sector. And uh, that is where we also facilitate. Our uh, MSME data bank, which we set up, was another step, which uh, it, it was again an initiative of the Ministry of MSME and NSI, where we wanted them to come into the formal sector. The Udyogadhar memorandum, which is there, you know, all these things are initiatives of the government which say that you should come into the, uh, the form. And both of our organizations do not say that we will not tax them. Rather, than if, if you look at the formal sector in the country, the total sector in the country, there is a huge gap between the two. Why? Because there is a large component which remains into the informal sector. That is what needs to be covered. And that is what the challenge is being faced by our ministry. And they believe that we should have, if we say there are 5 crore MSME units, why should all those 5 crore not be formally registered? And when the registration process has been made so simple. And then only, and it is not that the some of them are not enjoying uh, credit limits and all those things. So then, for reasons best known to them, they, they want to get confined to the informal, the so-called informal sector, but I'm sure when our organizations start working together, the channelizing them into the formal sector would be one of the steps we'll be taking. As far as the raw material is concerned, and SIC has a some scale, and I think this power two SME, they are also doing the same. Way. So how after this MOU, how you go to it, doing the same uh, parallel basis or something? There are so many banks in the country. We don't say that you have, you should have only one bank to serve the credit requirements. So if we have uh, two organizations even working on the same, uh, maybe the product, we offer the best services. And that is where I said a little while back, we will be complementing each other <coughs> in terms of providing the services to the... Not, to the not, not competing each other. I knew the word competing was also there, but I, I chose the word complementing because that is the intention. See, competition ends when you enter into an MOU. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I have not seen an MOU being signed in a competitive space. They yeah. choose to compete. Yeah. 
we choose to complement. That's the reason they are yes. That's right. Absolutely. We were, com maybe we were competing inadvertently if we were really doing that, but then we chose to complement each other Absolutely. and start working together. And that creates more value. Absolutely. So, I think we certainly have a long way to serve the cause of MSN. For that purpose, I am thankful to Mr. Narayan from Mr. Kaurusi and our CMD, Mr. Munna, because of their efforts, this MOU has been materialized and has been signed. I also thank you to all media people who came here to cover this event. And I wish that through you, this message can go to, can spread among MSME, so that uh, because of this MOU, they can avail best of the services of these two organizations. Thank you.